Greetings, DFG here. Hey guys, uh, I want to talk to you tonight about um, a concern that that's uh, very um, uh, close to me, very personal as a matter of fact, uh, as of a couple of days ago. Um, and I want to speak to you from the heart. So um, I ask that you would uh, hear me out. I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, but I think um, this topic that, that I want to share um, is worthy of uh, everyone's uh, consideration. And I think that if um, it's not addressed, uh, it could have repercussions that could, uh, could hurt you and those that you love for a very long time. Uh, the subject that I want to talk to you tonight about is stress. And um, when you think in terms of, of, of stress, I mean, stress is something that we all hear about all the time. It's uh, constantly um, are addressed or are, are, are referenced uh, whenever uh, we're going through, you know, things that are, that are very consuming or makes us feel overwhelmed. Um, but so, seldom do we really stop, at least... I would say, let's just go from a grassroots standpoint, from individuals who are in my circle of influence, uh, and not only that, but individuals that I'm associated with, very seldom when we talk about stress, we talk about it almost as a passing, you know, issue, nothing, it's, you know, something important, it's a way that we feel like maybe, you know, having a bad day or, you know, a little late for work, uh, you know, tired, but we don't talk about it in terms of the really serious um, um, consequences of not dealing with stress. Uh, I found out just a couple of days ago that almost every disease that individuals have, people have, in some form or another, is directed, directly related to stress. And when you talk about stress, you and, and I'll tell you why in a moment, um, why this came up as a very important topic uh, for me. Uh, but when you think about stress, you know, uh, in my mind, there are three, you know, major causes of it, and there are many ex uh, expensive reasons for it, and, and probably even um, many uh, expensive um, uh, treatments towards it, things that you can do to, to minimize, you know, stress. Uh, but the three... Uh, types of stress I want to talk about is personal life stress, work-related stress, and um, I'm going to call this boss-related stress, and I'll tell you why. Uh, but let's start with personal life stress. When you talk about in your personal life and you're dealing with, you know, the trials, you know, that each of us have to deal with as far as, you know, paying bills, uh, being responsible uh, for, you know, the daily chores, uh, providing, you know, um, a roof of our heads, uh, providing roof over the for, of, over the head of those that we love, uh, clothing, um, you know, getting them to school, uh, providing a place, a safe place for them to to be able to 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 grow, go out and play. If you have little kids, uh, and equally um, the personal stress of caring for loved ones, you know, those who may be sick, those who may be you know elderly. And obviously, you know, you know, the children, you know, and the babies. Uh, so when you're looking at stress from that perspective, from a personal life perspective, um, that those are those are, are key indicators. Uh, secondly, is work related stress and work related stress is if you're an employee at work. And as far as I'm how I'm relating it, if you're an employee at work, what's going on in the workplace that will allow, uh, you, uh, what causes stress for you are, more importantly, uh, what are the things that you can do uh, inside of the workplace to minimize uh, stress uh, with responsibilities that, that uh, we all are faced with in the workplace and in an ever-demanding uh, a corporate world where, you know, the most successful companies think in terms of more for less, uh, you know, and understandably so because they're trying to, to uh, protect, you know, their shareholder value, uh, obviously, you know, the integrity of the business. And quite frankly, if you work there, you want that company to be successful because that's how you're getting your paycheck. So no, no, 
no uh, conflict there. It's just understanding how to manage that, how to manage yourself in that type of environment. And uh, then boss related, and boss related to me is how you treat people in the workplace. You know, what I'm saying what kind of environment are you creating uh, as a leader inside of the organization? Because as at the end of the day, you're responsible for protecting the assets of any organization where you have been given charge, uh, regardless of what level you're in. If you're at a supervisory level, uh, assistant level, general manager level, regional level, you know, vice president level, you're still responsible for protecting the assets inside of that organization. And I will tell you that uh, t today, if you don't know, you should know, but I'll remind you and I'll bring it, just say it just for the purpose of saying it, your number one asset is your people. The most important asset that you have in your organization is your people. And so if you're protecting the corporate assets and you're the boss, then you have to be very sensitive to how you're managing your environment uh, as well because you're responsible for minimizing stress inside of the workplace. And so as, as we look at these three, personal life stress, work-related stress, uh, boss-related stress, I'm going to stress to you the importance that you find an outlet. Uh, you got to protect yourself, you know what I'm saying, so that, you know, whenever that pressure comes upon you to perform at a level where it becomes so overwhelming with you that it's causing your body to break down, you have to have the courage to walk away. If it's in your family life, you have to have the courage to seek out help, whether that's getting, uh, becoming a part of some type of um, community group, uh, out of the faith-based you know, groups, uh, even in the medical field, turn somewhere to get some help. Because if you don't do that, what is going to happen is that your body is going to fail you at a time that you least expect it to uh, in the workplace. It's the same thing. And we've heard about all the violence in the workplace as of late. You know, individuals going into the workplace and uh, inter uh, projecting all type of violence on people at work because they're stressed out, they're upset, uh, they feel like for whatever reason they're not being respected. And so what you get is a violent, you know, uh, response where innocent people end up getting hurt when if someone had taken time to just help that individual around how to alleviate stress what is the outlets of uh, make sure that, they, that we're looking for the signs of, of stress in an individual and direct them to that help. Um, and if they don't want the help, at least create an environment where we minimize the hostility that that individual may be dealing with. Partner them up, get them, you know, partners in the workplace who will, you know, who, they're, who you think that uh, have the skill sets to, you know, just to have a general conversation, make sure people are whole, make sure people are okay in the workplace. And you as an employee, uh, you have to look for the signs of it yourself, and when you see that it's getting so bad that you don't want to get up and go to work in the morning, that's the point in time that you have to literally make a decision, whatever that decision is, to make sure that you are not allowing your health, your livelihood, and the safety of others to be uh, compromised because you're not acknowledging it. And then again, uh, one more thing around the boss-related stress. Uh, if you're in charge, you're responsible for protecting the company's assets. And if you're not understanding this, you can create a situation where your company could be financially drained due to medical costs, work time off costs, uh, uh, you, know, tr you know, production costs because you're losing key players on your team due to, you know, stress-related um, pressures that are being applied that are not necessary and you have to look and understand as a leader boss because leaders are not going to do this but you know as a leader that you always find a way to leave your people feeling whole if you got to have a tough conversation that conversation should always end in a very respectful way allowing that individual op an opportunity to share how they feel about what you had to say and then most importantly encouraging that individual to continue to talk to you and, and and allow you to to understand what's important to them, so that you can be so you can provide a better work environment for them. Because if you don't do that, then very, you could be the major contributor. And uh, this, I'll say, you know, myself personally, um, for the last year and a half, I've had an opportunity, or the, no, I shouldn't call it an opportunity, but the last uh, year and a half, uh, being a little transparent, uh, I will tell you that. Um, I allow a lot of stress to come on me in the workplace and working for someone 
um, who, uh, quite frankly, uh, from a values perspective, leadership perspective, how to go about getting the best out of your team, uh, there was uh, some difference in, uh, around how to do that. And um, I'm a responsible individual, and, and where I am, I am, and I'm going to give 100% my best effort as, at all times. But I didn't see the stress signs that were falling towards me because I was allowing myself to be placed in a very stressful environment where that um, I probably should have taken, you know, some steps a little sooner than I did. And why do I say that? Uh, if you look at my face, you're probably noticing right here some maybe deformity and maybe a little bit less here. And uh, matter of fact, I had to uh, leave work a couple of days ago because of of this situation, uh, only to go and seek uh, medical attention and found out that uh, I'm dealing with a situation called Bell's Palsy. And Bell's Palsy is, is um, a temporary paralysis of the lower face that's commonly associated, you know, with stress. And um, fortunately for me, it's treatable. And um, in most situations, uh, it's 100% uh, recoverable in a couple of weeks. Um, and so, you know, I suspect, that, you know, everything will go back to normal at some point. But if it doesn't, it doesn't. But the lesson here is, you know, as much as I teach and I coach and I try to practice the right leadership skills, I'm always mindful of how I'm interacting with others because of the cost that's related to stress, the cost that's related to time off, uh, the cost that's involved in corporate expense around, you know, health insurance, etc. It's just not worth it, people. And I'm saying to you, whether you're a victim of it or whether you're a perpetrator of it, stop it, find some help, find another outlet, change jobs if necessary. But what you don't want to do is allow yourself to stay under that kind of pressure because like, it's almost like a pressure cooker. You know how it is a pressure cooker? If you don't release that steam at some point, the whole thing will explode. And you don't want to be in, the, you don't want to be in a situation where you're dealing with something even more serious uh, than the situation I just mentioned to you. Okay? So I um, hope that helps. Um, you know, for you that know me, I'm going to be okay. You know, so, but I just don't want you to fall victim of it because you didn't understand the consequences of allowing yourself to stay in a stressful environment, whether it's personal whether it's work-related or leadership, pushing that type of uh, pressure on your people, um, you need to know this, okay? Well, have a good evening. Thank you for listening. Now you know, DFG, get in flight. Good night, everyone.